YouTube. What's going on? Welcome back to Created by Cody. This is another episode of The Tasteless Chef, episode five. If you're a Hell's Kitchen fan and spoilers for season 19 matter to you and you haven't seen episode 12, do not watch this episode until you've seen it. Four years ago when I was living in Germany and albeit I wasn't taking the best care of myself, I got really sick and then the sickness went away. I just couldn't smell even after the congestion went away. And then after 34 days, I realized that it was a problem. There were six months where I just wanted to give up and I didn't know what, uh, I didn't know what to do. I had a very short reign of this, I don't know if I can do this. And then it, not like I had an option, it was like a wave that came over of, yes, you absolutely can't. It reminds me of like a statement that I've heard Killer Mike say that was meaningful, where he says, who I am remains important. And that's what that moment felt like. It, it, was, it was an on and off switch. There was a moment where I realized I had been hiding from something and I was afraid of something. And there was a moment where I realized quickly after that, it didn't fucking matter. I just wanted to give the name of the show a little bit more context, and this was the perfect moment. But there's a lot of work to do. This is a competition recipe at the end of the day, so there's a lot of steps to get done. Thanks for tuning in to Created by Cody. This is The Tasteless Chef, episode five. So the ingredients we need to cover are pork chops, chorizo, bourbon, pomegranates, polenta, carrot. As opposed to episode three with the schnitzel where we could pound something out and then layer it with seasoned flour and breadcrumb, etc. This larger profile, it's so easy to overcook and have a dry product at the end. So doing this whole salt sugar situation is gonna ensure that we have like optimal moisture retention. And what it's also gonna do is all of the moisture that it pulls out of the edges of the pork chop, it's gonna to start to replace where the with this with it, 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 with this <laughs> what this will do is basically start to season it internally. Uh, we'll wash this off right before we sear it because high sugar will burn before we're ready to build like that really nice crust. And then, like most competition recipes, I always do a pickle. This one's a bit different though. This one's meant to be caramelized and reduced into a syrup. So basically we're just gonna make a super flavorful liquid and then use it to deglaze something. That way it really coats. So we're gonna fabricate our vegetables. Just uh, shallots cut in half, smash the garlic, really get in there. And then on medium high heat, we are going to add equal parts water, vinegar, and bourbon, and then one part vanilla sugar to one third part salt. Vanilla sugar is just old vanilla carcasses that I keep in sugar. It's a good way to repurpose it. And then from there, you just wanna heat it till it's boiling and then reduce it to medium high until it's reduced about half and it's pretty syrupy. And then for our pickle mise. For this and included in our basket is corn and pomegranates. To get this one started, you wanna fabricate your shallot, you want to do a small dice, but not smaller than the size of like, a, you know, the pomegranate seeds. So between this, the garlic, the corn, and everything, you want to keep it as uniform as possible. For the corn, paper towel down so the impact doesn't leave your blade just going right jettisoning into some glass. Nobody wants that. And then for the pomegranates, I like to just cut the outside layer and then break them off into chunks. From there, little blunt force to the back of them, they usually all fall out. You just pick out the little white parts and then in a hot pan, a little bit of neutral oil, heat it on medium high, add your shallot and garlic, season it with some salt, then your corn, turn it on to super mega high and then add in your pomegranates. Now this should be quick, high heat for a minute and a half, just so everything comes together and then we're gonna add our pickling liquid. Now this we want to heat on medium high heat and just not cook it to the point where it's a caramel, but cook it to the point where it starts to, when jostled, everything moves together. It's not like you have a bunch of liquid moving around. And then it's polenta situation time. 
A good rule for this is five to one liquid to polenta ratio. So for a competition setting, just to save time, I'll do three parts of a chicken stock. Add in something to season it while I'm bringing it up to a boil. And then once it's out of boil, I pull those out. And then the name of the game here is to whisk while hot. So make sure your uh, whisk works. And then whisk in your polenta while it's super, super hot. Now you have to make sure that you're paying attention to this. This will happen very quickly, but also you wanna make sure that the heat's distributing evenly as it thickens quickly. Once it starts to come together, then I'll add in the two parts milk and then just continue to stir as we start to incorporate our butter piece by piece. You don't wanna do it too quickly as it might split. And then once it starts to come together, taste it, check it for seasoning and then pull it off. And yeah, let's do some herbs, baby. For the green onions, we definitely want a light onion flavor, but for the most part, we want height. And that's why we're gonna do it this place. We're gonna cut it on the bias, put in some ice water, and then this is gonna make it curl up. So just let it sit for five to 10 minutes and it should be good. For the parsley, we wanna cut it small, but not crazy small. We just wanna make sure there's not a large difference between like big pieces and small pieces. And then for our pork chops, they've been in their cure for a second. So now we wanna remove that cure. We wanna rinse it off with cold water and then pat them dry. Mainly because the sugar, although it helps with moisture retention and although it flavors the proteins internally in a way that we live, but it also burns hella easy. And for the type of crust that we wanna develop for how big it is, it would burn way before we get to the point that we want to, that optimal crunch. So in a hot ass pan, put the pork chops in, making sure to face them away from you and don't touch them for a good minute. Let that initial crust develop. Then, once it's super easy to pull off the pan and it doesn't stick at all, check to see if it's at the level of caramelization that you want, and you want a lot, but you don't want 100% because we still have to base this and that's gonna continue caramelizing it. Because these are, you know, bigger and there's a bone in them, but they're not crazy big, we can finish off the rest of the crust on the top of these pork chops just by basting it. So while the bottom layer of these cook, Add in butter, thyme, garlic, I mean, whatever aromatics you want to use at the end of the day. That's what I used on the show. And then I'll usually drop the thyme in the bubbly butter for a second because it pops. And I just want to get that out of the way real quick. That way when I'm basting this, it's not just bursting all over my knuckles the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So then base these and basically try to target any areas that you see hasn't really had you know enough caramelization. Making sure also that you're moving whatever aromatics you have around so it's also in sort of the disbursement of the butter while you're basting. And then when it's all pretty and basted, take it out, let it rest, and give it its time. The general rule uh, 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 is 50% of the cooking time. So those I cooked for, you know, around eight-ish minutes, eight to 10, so I'm gonna write, uh, rest them four to five. Now we're gonna make our chorizo vinaigrette. And this is very much so a warm vinaigrette. It's almost in between, you know, a gravy and a vinaigrette. So with a chorizo on a high heat, you can give those a rough cut as can you with the shallot um, and the garlic because all we really need right now is a very flavorful oil. So once you've added all your ingredients, just continue to cook them on high. And you'll start to see it's starting to leach all those beautiful red smoked paprika colory oils. And then from there, add it some thyme, and then pull it off heat. And then now we're gonna bring it up to super mega high heat, add in some bourbon, and then light it on fire. But hella do not do this if you do not have like eight feet of room above you. That will go pretty high and in a regular apartment or anything like that, that can be bad news bears. So please. Don't do that at home unless you know you can. From there, you just add in your a little bit of your pickling liquid that you have left over and reduce that into a little nice, you know, gravy-ish consistency and we're ready to build, baby! And this one's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna add a little bit of fresh parsley into our little pickle situation. Polenta down to the center of the plate, make a nice little cycle. Just enough to frame the pork chop so both edges are just touching like the outside. Staple on in like little odd groups, clumps of your little pickled vegetable fruit situation. Add in your curly little green onions and then dapple it with the vinaigrette and that builds the dish. 
God, I, you know, this took me probably a good 90 seconds to come up with when I first saw the box, and I was so excited. But not only that, like, Chef Jason Santos, my sous chef for the show, you know, being a gangster, you know, these types of ingredients being his wheelhouse, I wanted to do a great dish for Gordon, but leaving the blue team into the black jackets, I wanted to also just do an homage to, you know, the, the leader of our team throughout that situation. You never know who your sous chef is going to be, and I'm, I'm glad it was him. One thing I definitely did know was was that I was gonna get a mother black jacket. Which, at some point, I will probably adorn on my wall and stare at forever. But this was another competition review episode. If you like this episode in this format, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And whether it's welcome back or welcome to, thanks for stopping by Created by Cody. This was episode five of The Taste of Chef, and we just went over the dish that got me a black jacket. Uh, like always, thanks for stopping by, and go be great.